You've tuned into the Bellingham Podcast for the week of August 25, 2019. This is a bubbly episode 129. From that city by the Sailor Sea, I am AJ Barce. And straight out of 9226, I am Chris Powell on this episode. You know, I'm feeling kind of thirsty all of a sudden. I could sure use a refreshing beverage to help make this show a success. But not just any kind of drink. I don't want an alcoholic drink, nor a caffeinated cuppa. I want something that doesn't have high fructose corn syrup, citric acid, or other ingredients I can't pronounce. I want seltzer. You know, AJ and I have guzzled our fair share of this bubbly beverage, and we're going to dive deep into the depths of our favorite carbonated liquid, and you're coming with us. So pop a top, you beautiful listener, and throw one back with us. This, if you haven't figured it out by now, is the Bellingham Podcast. And how do you respond to that one, AJ? <laughs> I don't know. How are you doing, Chris? I am feeling energized. Yeah, I can tell we're highly uncaffeinated. Why do we have a bevy of beverages in front of us? Well, you know, because so we, we, we're talking about drinks, and we really yes. can't uh, start the show. That that hook was uh, kind of the uh, unofficial start of the show. We have to start the yeah, show in yeah. three, okay. two, one. There you go. That's good. <laughs> this this carbonated can opening was brought to you by one Buble. of bu- bubbly <laughs> Buble. Spark, sparkling water. Cheers. Cheers. Ching, ching. By the way, the burps are free in, yeah. as we record this episode. Yeah. And the links will be in the show notes. Drink. Mm-hmm. Drink. Drink. Oh, many so, times. Yes. So I have to say at the top of the show, uh, one late night, I was thinking to myself, self, what are we going to do for this week's show? And 129 is a special number, you know. It, it totally isn't. But, you know, <laughs> as I was thinking, I was like, you know, self, we always joke about, you know, we drink beverages, coffee always is this main staple in the Bellingham yes. podcast. But seltzer, wait, seltzer has an interesting history. It's kind of not American, and but right now it's having its heyday here in America. Oh, my Lord, we got to do an episode on seltzer. And he told me this, ladies and gentlemen, and I go, you know, I'm putting on my Seinfeld hat and I'm like, let's do a show about seltzer. I did. I did preface. I was like, dude, let's do an episode on seltzer. And you humored me. And now you see the glory that is. Yes, this, this is a Bellingham podcast <laughs> record for the amount of show notes. For the love of Randy Rhodes, and I mean this, drink. drink. Uh, we have a whole lot of links and other information uh, should you want to peruse while you're listening to this podcast. But first, AJ, yes. we weren't, yes, uh, we didn't deliver an episode last week because ah. I was parts unknown. Yes, where were you? Recharging internal batteries. I'm glad. At an undisclosed location. Beautiful. My, my house. But uh, <laughs> I needed some time to get away. We didn't record. And uh, for those of you who want your money back, well, uh, you know, <laughs> email us for the, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Let's talk about bubbly, sparkling water club, uh, all different times of fizzy water. Yeah, so there's different kinds. So it's funny. So when you when you talk about soda, usually, uh, or pop, depending on what part mm-hmm. of, the, uh, uh, of the United States that you come from, that's usually a carbonated beverage with some sort of syrupy goodness thing. And mind-altering chemicals that happen to do stuff to your brain and digestive tract. Right. So we're not going to go into the history of soda, because soda in, in America also has an interesting story, because there are there was times where things like lithium was put into certain soda beverages. Or and, other illicit materials. Or other materials. <laughs> Hi, Coca-Cola company. But the base of all of it always stems from this concept of carbonated water. That's right. But uh, when we look at actual seltzer... Uh, in its history, it's it actually started off much more than just uh, carbonation put into water. So our journey has to begin back in the 18th century, 1700s. Right. So I uh, got a little story for you folks. Uh, there was a fellow named Joseph Priestley, no relation to Jason Priestley from Beverly Hills 90210. Uh, he was in his home in Leeds, England, and happened to, happened to be next to a brewery, which gave off, quote, plenty of vapors. Mm. And he became interested in these errors, as he called them, and particularly one that was responsible for the bubbles in the beer hmm. from this brewery. Uh, he referred to it as a fixed air and found out that the same gas made certain naturally occurring spring waters effervescent. I like that adjective. I love effervescence. He combined sulfuric acid, which is what you might have in those pools that you, you know, the nat- natural pools or something like that. It, it stanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and chalk to form carbon dioxide, although he didn't recognize this gas. Here's where things take a turn that I wasn't expecting <laughs> in researching this. He collected, I'm not kidding. We have a link to this article. He collected the gas 
in a pig's bladder yep. and found a way to use it to carbonate water. And, and as a result of this experiment back in 1874, 19th century for you history buffs, he was awarded the Royal Society's prestigious Copley Medal for a publication entitled, I kid you not again, folks, Directions for Impregnating Water with Fixed Air. There you go. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> but, yeah. So what's funny about that is you have – a watchmaker by the name of Schweppes. Oh, yes. The tonic water the guy. The tonic water guy. <laughs> and if you look at him, he actually was a bubble entrepreneur as well. He founded uh, Schweppes in Geneva. Uh, and, and then later, I, I believe it was like 10 years or so later, he did move to London and such. But he also had a, a similar thing where he would take a, you know, a bladder of some animal mm. and would impregnate water with said bubbles as well. So like it's a gas to find out who uh, yes, came up with, yes. uh, you know, who put it, the gas in water first. And social media back in the 1783s didn't really have this wide worldwide uh, quick effect. Fun to- fact though for pub trivia. I love fun facts. So, so Schweppes, the reason why I zeroed in on him yep. versus uh, uh, Joseph Priestley is that Schweppes here you go, watch fam. Was also a watchmaker. Well, well there you go. <laughs> Got to tie in the watches, AJ. I wouldn't I doubt it for one second. So, 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 so that's a little bit of a preface of the history. Now, when we look at bubbly water, there's kind of like four genres of bubble water. So we've got club soda, seltzer, which is also sparkling water, sparkling mineral water for everybody else abroad. Sup, Dan? Uh, and then also tonic water, which uh, usually see bar side. It's the four sparkling water groups. It is the four sparkling horsemen of the drinking apocalypse. Oh, that could work too. Yes. So, okay. So club soda starts off. So what, what is, what, why do we have a club and soda? It's, uh, well, it's a marketing term, of course, <laughs> pretty much really? plain. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much plain water where they add minerals and dissolved solids, kind of like uh, a chemical called sodium bicarbonate, sodium citrate, citrate, uh, disodium phosphate and other words that I can't pronounce. Uh, the, the this is, uh, it's artificially added rather than naturally occurring, and it can taste kind of flavorless to either salty or bitter. Right. Uh, I'm reading notes, and yeah, that's that's kind of why they have. Let's call this the vanilla. This is of of effervescence. Yes. So so what this is simulating is the natural quote seltzer. So seltzer is just plain water that has been carbonated. Uh, now, in America, uh, we have links in the show notes. Drink. Again. There, there's, in Brooklyn, there's actually a seltzer man. There's, oh, there's, yeah. there's, uh, if you, it's funny, there's, there's several links in the show notes, and, and he shows up in all three of these videos, because in Brooklyn, they're like the only uh, uh, seltzer impregnator. I don't know. Who, I can't remember. Seltzer, seltzer works. That's what they call them. Seltzer, seltzer works. Seltzer works. Uh-huh. Uh, I believe here in America. But seltzer in its original form predates both Schweppes as well as Joseph Priestley and goes, I mean, I think a hundred years before them to what was commonly referred to as spa towns. Spa towns. So spa is actually a, a in the name of a place. And there was also needle, needle seltzer. Uh, which I, I believe they're kitty corner in Germany of okay. each other. And the waters of Needle Seltzer uh, in the township of Seltzer is where we get the term Seltzer because these were natural springs that would bubble up and people saw them as medicinal because th- there was heavy, there was minerals, it was bubbly, and they saw uh, it as a medicinal thing. Thus, it was marketable. Uh-huh. So Niederseltzer was kind of like a district within the town of Seltzer, I, Germany. I, that is that is my understanding. Kind of like the Bronx is to New York. Right. And Fairhaven is kind of like a district within Bellingham. Word. There's our connection with the Bellingham <laughs> podcast. Thank you very much. Good night, folks. We're out of here. No, I'm so, just kidding. So Seltzer in its original form was actually a mineral water. But here in America, we call Seltzer, uh, basically, it's just plain Jane water that has been impregnated by carbonation. Sounds great. So let's talk about uh, Seltzer or sparkling water. So sparkling, so, so, so seltzer, uh, basically you have just plain water carbonated, uh, but, and it's, it's lacking minerals. So it's, it's just, it's just plain Jane carbonated water. Um, some varieties are flavored with like fruit, fruit essences. You you can have like, you know, I think this buble is cherry, cherry bubbly that we're drinking. Mm -hmm. So we have essence or oil of, of cherry uh, as we record today, but it lacks the slight mineral bite of said previous club soda. Because In the it, words of Barry White, it's smoother. It's smoother. Uh, which apparently is the, more of the palate here in America. 
um, just from what I've been told. They make pretty good cocktails. You basically just, you know, add a uh, flavor, whatever you want to it. Uh, for instance, Pomplamousse, which also in front of us, we have Perrier, uh, which does it for us. But this, because it's from France, mm-hmm. is uh Mineral water. Popple mousse can be equated to grapefruit. If in fact pink right. grapefruit. I did I sorry, I did mean to say grapefruit. Sorry. Of course, no problem. But <laughs> Isoline. Anyway. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to all my French friends, Pomple Mousse. So a uh, sparkling water is like the carbonated without the minerals. Yes. But then they also, Which is also have seltzer. Right. But then they also have sparkling mineral water. Yes. So are you keeping track of that this folks? <laughs> this we, is fun stuff. Yes, we, we we devolved our notes because it was kind of funny tracking this because we're just talking about water, folks. Mm-hmm. So sparkling mineral water. So this is where we get our San pa- uh, San Pan Supnik, uh San Pellegrino uh, out of Italy. We get Perrier. The difference between this and seltzer here in America is that this is sparkling mineral water. So usually it comes out of a natural spring or well. And uh, because of that, there's dissolved solids from the ground that go into it. It's naturally impregnated. Uh, (laughs) I think this is a record for the most time a podcast will ever use the word impregnated. Yes, Uh, Mineral water is usually uh, enjoyed best on its own. Uh, which is why you find it everywhere in uh, Europe. Its flavor is usually from the minerals uh, such as magnesium, potassium, and calcium that are naturally found in it. As opposed to seltzer, it's not used in cocktail because usually cocktail aficionados want that clear, clean taste of the other things that are being infused in the cocktail. It don't need no stinking cocktail, man. It stands on its own. Are you the most interesting water drinker in the world? Just like, about. Okay. But the fourth horseman of the uh, carbonated apocalypse is tonic water. Yes. And I believe that is association with Schweppes. Uh, well, yes, there's an association to Schweppes, but also like I slid that in there because tonic water, uh, when, it's a fun story. So when I, because I love my bubbly water, I remember this, the first time I ever got, because it was on sale, tonic water. Mm-hmm. And a buddy of mine's like, oh yeah, it's it's the same thing as your you know normal thing. It just it, it, We just call it something different. Boy, he was uneducated. Mm-hmm. So I took a swig of tonic water straight out of the bottle, thinking it's like, you know, my Smooth. my sandpan or yes. whatever. Who only to hit be hit by this other thing where it has this citrus bitter citrus taste. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also has this other thing called quinine yes. in it. So tonic water is basically seltzer with like the citrus quinine stuff and is used as a cocktail or mocktail maker. Hence gin and tonic. Hence a gin and tonic. All right. So there you go. Now that you've been <gasps> made aware of this, we have a quiz coming up. Please take out your pencil. Anyway, so anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. <laughs> this is back to school. That was good. We're getting that was close. Good. Thank that was you good. very much. So what are we doing? We want to make you aware because as you are uh, having decision fatigue in the soda and beverage aisle in your local grocery store, you got a lot to choose from. Yeah. So let's take a little bit of a rundown on some of the brands and, and types of Fizziness yes. you might be able to uh, purchase. Yeah, and also uh, most of these either Chris and I drink. <laughs> uh, on a regular basis yeah. because, you know, we talked about it in previous there, episodes. Yes, there are others uh, outside of this list, but we're going to talk about the ones that we either drink or make fun of. Yes, and so before we uh, get into different type of choices, we want to give a shout out to Community Powered KMRE 102.3 FM. Yep, it's community powered and also streaming at KMRE.org. And they air our show Mondays at 6.30 p.m. and Thursdays at 6 p.m. And thank you very much for being able to do that, KMRE. Now, let's talk about types of beverages in the seltzer family yeah. that you might find in the local store. AJ. Right. So starting at the top, you have 1783. We have Schweppes, which again, was that watchmaker that yes. also liked to impregnate water on his past. Uh, I think we're up to hobby. six now for impregnating. Yes. Oh, I'm going, to, I'm going to milk it. How that was, that was seven. Okay. Um, it, uh, like I said, he was found, it was originally founded in Geneva, was later moved to London. Following that is my, one of my faves and staples in my house, which is San Pellegrino at yes. a whopping 120 years old. It's not the drink that is 120 years old. It's a company. Let's clear that up. Well, yeah, that'd be a very aged bottle. It tastes a lot different. I wonder if does 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 sparkling water get better with age? No, it's not no, about that. Just us <laughs> as podcast Ooh. hosts. Thank you very much. That that was very seltzer, very smooth of you. I'm barely, I'm rather uh, biting like that. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, San Pellegrino. You've seen these guys. Uh, they usually have the uh, the red star on their label, uh, based out of Italy, and it's uh, bottled at the the source. And they are a natural mineral water. Um, you find them also everywhere in uh, Europe. You can keep it out. You can keep it chilled and. Voila. Following that, at a whopping 150 years old, we have 
Perrier. No, it is not Perrier. Uh, Perrier. <laughs> Which rhymes with derriere. <laughs> no, this is actually a, 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 a upstanding yes. beverage from France. Yes, from France. Uh, again, it's, uh, you know, captured at the source there in France. And I, I don't know what water or spring they, they capture. But again, it's a mineral water. The th- cool thing about Perrier, and you've seen these bottles before, both San Pellegrino and Perrier. They have a ping to it. They got a ping to it. Yeah. The it's the bottle. So Perrier is is well known, and I believe the bottle design is actually patented by them. Huh. It's a design. Um, it's the the wide bubble bottom. It's like a football with a, a neck put on it. Sure. Um, that is their. It's part of like their their brand identity is that mm-hmm. bottle. Very good. Um, so I wanted to bring that up because it's kind of cool. Sounds good. Now we have some around uh, America. We got American made uh, <laughs> of carbonated drinks around here. Also known as the anti Perrier. <laughs> Talk, talk to me about that. Okay, AJ. okay. So we have Lacroix, Lacroix, Lacroix. Hey, Seltzer fans, give us a shout. Let us know how to correctly pronounce C R O I X. So yeah, and I've, I've I've gone back and forth with this, and I, I believe it's I think it's Lacroix is okay. how they actually do do. Let's pronounce go with it, that but, for this episode. We uh, still want to keep our clean Lacroix, tag. Lacroix. Yeah. What's funny is Lacroix has is, is really been in the news lately. I mean, it's kind of been the unofficial drink of two, the 2019 summer here in America. What's funny is they go back to 1981. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're a fairly young company. G. Heilman Brewing Company of La Crosse, Wisconsin, introduced Lacroix as one of the first anti Perrier, you know, brands. It, it was meant to appeal to sparkling water consumers who were kind of put off by Perrier's, you know, French or somewhat snobby uh, uh, perception. Alleged. Yes, alleged, because uh, I don't find them snobby at all, because I drink them. That's right. LaCroix kind of uh, marketed its its niche and image itself for as the all-occasions beverage. Like, oh, you know, you can um, you just grab a can of it. It doesn't have to be in a glass. You know, there's no glass bottles here. It's an every man, every person drink. Every person drink. drink, yeah. So they were, that was really how they kind of did it. In in 2015, there was a... Um, uh, the the sugary soda, the 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 health concerns of America was really on its height, and thus Lacroix really started to ascend here in America because people wanted a more healthy alternative, and because it was already posited as a every person's drink. That is why they've seen a surge in popularity. So along those lines, we have a couple newer kids on the block, if you will, to use an 80s reference. I just realized the bubbly can, the little tab says, hey Yeah, every can has a different kind of oi or, hey, uh, you know, sup or something like that. I never noticed that. hey yeah. So uh, B-U-B-L-Y as opposed to the two Bs, how we normally would pronounce the word bubbly. Uh, bubbly sparkling water is actually from the Pepsi co- uh, PepsiCo company. And uh, if you go to their website, oh my gosh, be prepared <laughs> for a Michael Bublé infused, oh, wow. uh, colorful beyond Sub all Michael. get out and uh, a rather ADHD website. <laughs> Just take our word for it. Yeah. Uh, Bubbly comes in, you know, usually the 12 packs in in the can straight up. They have a number of flavors. In this case, um, I like the crimson red can Yeah. uh, for those of you uh, shopping uh, at home. Lipstick red? Sounds great. Okay. But anyway, the cherry flavored, the berry flavored, et cetera, et cetera. And so while this is a Pepsi company, we also have uh, Coca-Cola having their own uh, offering of sparkling water, Hmm. uh, Desani. Oh, yeah, Dasani. I believe that is the uh, correct pronunciation. They have uh, Dasani Sparkling, which is uh, uh, sparkling water, 14 flavors available, another ADHD website, because <laughs> every website nowadays that markets a product is completely dazzling. Right. And if you look at both of those brands, one being Pepsi, one being Coke, kind of dovetails into what LaCroix was actually trying to harness, is that, you know, the anti, you know, sugary, high fructose corn syrup movement, thus both Pepsi and Coke had to retaliate with yep. their own... Um, you know, uh, healthier beverages. The big beverage companies have both kinds of music, country and Western. So a newcomer, a new kid on the block, like I mentioned before, founded in just 2010, the year my beautiful wife and I got married, uh, is called Spindrift. I had not heard this one. So if you went to certain coffee shops that are located everywhere around this nation... You get where I'm coming from. Woods? Not quite. Oh. Uh, I'm talking about the the state or nation. Uh, They have 
cans of Spindrift Seltzer, usually in a grapefruit flavor, because sometimes I frequent one of these national chain coffee establishments. But here's the thing about Spindrift, folks. They are a fairly uh, small company with about 99 employees. I think they take pride in being a micro-seltzer. Micro-seltzer. We need to we need to patent that. Uh, I I just might because I didn't see that name on their website, but I came up with Micro it. Seltzer. You're welcome, Spindrift. You're welcome. But here's the thing: they made the decision to distance themselves from their competitors who used, as you mentioned before, uh, having fruit essences or oils. They're going with every can that you crack open, like we did in this show, five to eight percent of real fruit juice. Oh, interesting. As opposed to natural flavors. Hmm. So here's a little bit of a different flavor to it. Yeah. Eh. Uh, Flavy Flav. Yes. But uh, take a look at Spindrift uh, on on the web to be able to get some more information. Should you want a coffee alternative to going to your house of caffeine, I think Spindrift might have your hookup. And then finally, to uh, the north of our neighbors, uh, you know, as we talk about legacy uh, from Schweppes and Perrier, uh, don't forget Canada Dry, y'all. What's up, uh, Canada? <laughs> by the way, it's made in Canada. Is uh, it really? <laughs> since 1904. Oh, cool. Yeah. Best known for its ginger ale, uh, which also- Of the, course. The original ginger uh, flavor helped in digestion, but uh, they often refer to them- ginger ale as a champagne of soda. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, they do have a Best sparkling sense seltzer water offering as well because they want a piece of the market share too. Yes. And I believe they also have a tonic water uh, as well. Yes. And so one more uh, vendor of seltzer beverages than might be in a typical coffee shop, perhaps one regionally that you might find uh, around here that we just previously mentioned, AJ. Yeah. So Voss or Vos, I'm not too sure Let's which one. Let's go with Voss. Voss. So V-O-S-S. Uh, which uh, comes from Norway. And so the, these guys, it's funny because, uh, I don't know, I I feel like I've seen them uh, everywhere and mm-hmm. for the longest time, which their marketing is brilliant because they were actually founded back in 1998 by childhood friends, Ols Christian Sandberg and Christ- Christopher Harlem. There you go. Um, they, they started out as a venture that purchased a small water company in Vatistrom, Norway. Excellent. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, I believe they are on the natural mineral water, uh, not the uh, uh, seltzer side of things. And they also have a very unique uh, glass uh, uh, torpedo-like. Very very minimal. (laughs) Very minimal. Very minimal. Not a lot of stuff on it, but yes, they definitely have the tall, slender glass container. Which the thing about them that I would point out is take a look at the color of cap because you're going to have a plain And you're going to have the uh, bubbly one. And if you were like me, make sure you grab the right color cap because I bought one once and I took a swig. I'm like, this is just plain water. (laughs) I was so disappointed. (laughs) But you're still drinking healthy. I was. All right. So pop quiz, AJ. Okay, go for it, Chris. You are banished to a desert island in the Pacific because people are finally tired of you running your mouth about uh, various (laughs) topics. What do you bring with you for a fizzy companion? I gotta go. And no, you can't bring your wife, who's fuzzy enough, uh, effervescent enough. Uh, I love my wife. That was a compliment, by the way. You know, I love Sandpan, uh, San Pellegrino, mm-hmm. um, just because being half Italian and stuff. But I got to say, I really love Pomplamoose Perrier. Okay. Yeah. What Fair about enough. you, Chris? I have, it really, I'm, I'm, I'm not really tied to a brand, yeah. but I do like a berry-flavored seltzer. Let's go with strawberry, shall we? Ooh. Uh, even though we're drinking cherry right now, but let's just try strawberry, raspberry, something like that. Um, I'm a pretty open guy to brands, but just go stock my fridge with some berry uh, sparkling seltzer water and I'm good to go. Okay. Let me ask you another pop quiz then. Hit me. Are you more of an American palate where it's uh, stripped of all the minerals, just give you straight purified uh, water with carbonation, or are you more like me, who leans closer to the palate of minerals in your mouth? I don't care. Really? You don't taste a difference? I ingest so much garbage in my <laughs> diet, it really doesn't matter. Okay. I've already ingested worse than minerals <laughs> just in the food that I've eaten. And I try to eat healthy, but sometimes it just doesn't work, folks. So, um, no, I'm really not uh, that much of a connoisseur of what uh, seltzer I ingest. But this show wouldn't be complete if we didn't try to discuss a way and how we can hack technology. And in this case, how can people hack a beverage? Beverage hacking. So challenge accepted, did a little (laughs) bit of research on how can you hack seltzer water. Now, 
you know, uh, a bottle of San Pellegrino costs yes. about a couple uh, bucks. E- yeah, nowadays. Yeah. A 12 pack gets you around 350. Sure. Okay. So there are folks who have bought in a device called a soda stream. Yes. You've heard of this? Yeah, yeah. They got the little containers and it makes it fizzy. Yep, yep. And you add a little bit of syrup or whatever Make flavor your own content. actual soda pop. Yep. There you go. Some brilliant Mensa candidates decided to hook up a heavy carbon dioxide tank. Think welding, folks. To, or a paintball canister to their soda stream. Please do not try this at home. I'm we are not endorsing <laughs> or condoning it, but we're no. just saying please be safe in your bubbly beverage drinking. We got we got a couple links for the love of Kirk Hammett drink. Uh, <laughs> These folks attach a paintball canister, for example, to their soda stream, but they save a ton of money. Sure. Per bottle cost is roughly 25 cents a liter of carbonated water and is much cheaper than the supermarket seltzer and involves less worry about the environmental cost of making plastic and glass bottles to ship around the world. You can refill the tanks, I guess these uh, paintball cartridge tanks perhaps, yeah, cost yeah. about 10 bucks instead of 45 bucks, which may be... Uh, what refill uh, tanks could cost for a soda stream. I was impressed. Uh, yes, I was too. And when I, ha- I had to reread that when you put it in the show notes, because I was like, this sounds like a bad idea if you didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> but obviously these people know what they're doing. Otherwise, they'd be drinking something else other than seltzer. Uh, there are those who want to completely go DIY off the rails on a carbonation train. Uh, there is a link to an instructables.com website. For $1,000 of parts, you get yourself a uh, little mini bar fridge type thing, modify it with a beer faucet or tap and some uh, reverse osmosis system, and bam, you got yourself some uh, ongoing seltzer goodness, carbonated uh, seltzer goodness. Or if you don't feel like the DIY stuff, go to that uh, online website marketplace we've talked about ad nauseum and drop 100 bucks on a Drinkmate carbonation maker should you not want to buy the cans or bottles in the stores. The other thing that I would also throw out, uh, and it's also in the show notes, the, the, the the uh, soda works um, that I mentioned before out of Brooklyn is called Gomberg Seltzer. And if you're in New York City, you can have Gomberg Sel- uh, you can have seltzer from Gomberg. Soda men, which is what they're commonly referred to as the people who are still in, bu- in the business of delivering uh, seltzer to different uh, bars, companies, or uh, here in America. It was funny because when I looked into the research of this, before we were having milk delivered to our doors, you would have seltzer delivered to your doors. And Gomberg, when they uh, fill the bottles, they fill the vintage original, you know, uh, you've probably seen them, folks, like in uh, Bugs Bunny cartoons. It's the, the cylindrical bottle with the silver uh, tab and you pull the back on it and it squirts Elmer Fudd in the face. Yep. That is still a thing. And what's cool about it when you watch the uh, either the Great Big Story link that I have in the show notes or Bon Appetit's um, uh, Brooklyn's Last Seltzer Men. Uh, also known as I Got a Guy, they actually talk about the stories of some of those bottles. The fact that these bottles and and pressurized heads go all the way back to 1800. Like you know the 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 fine gentleman who is the fourth generation owner of Gomberg Seltzer, he said like you know my great grandfather could have drank out of this. Like that's what's kind of really interesting about just this crazy thing known as bubbly water. It's not just a slapstick comedy prop like Looney no. Tunes or Three Stooges or Our Gang Little Rascals. It's actually a functional device Seriously. still in production. And it's not just for hipsters. Like it was it's a tool. Yeah. I have no clue. Yeah, I can see a trend in that one going, you know, if we do all this artisanal yeah. uh, seltzer stuff in your homebrew mm-hmm. for pun- lack of uh, for lack of better terms, yeah. yeah. Uh, why not have your own seltzer device like that? Coats. So, um, golly, my <laughs> my, <laughs> my thirst has been satiated with this knowledge about seltzer. How about you? Um, um, I'm 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 bubbling over with just delight with all the uh, uh, information we had. <laughs> I think we should put an end to these puns and stick a fork in the show, or at least pop the top on it. And that wraps it up for this edition of the Bellingham Podcast. Thank you again so much for listening to us, rating us, reviewing us wherever you like to get our podcast. Remember, you might be listening to us with a a carbonated uh, beverage in hand on Camry 102.3 FM. They're community powered uh, and streaming worldwide on the internet. It's a series of tubes if you haven't heard on K. KM- MRE.org. Yep. And on that note, from the carbonated city by the Salish Sea, I'm AJ Barce. And uh, hold, withholding in my burps, I am Chris Powell. Thanks again so much for joining us on the Bellingham Podcast. 
dude, we impregnated that episode with fact. <laughs> That's number 10. <laughs>